Hey, Cavern here with the Sea Butters channel, and I have been enjoying playing with this new X134070 version. Now, one of uh, the things that is a little bit weak is the cooling on this machine. Uh, the Z13 acronym actually really outdoes this, and, and it's noticeable. This is They only tune this to 60 watts versus 65 watt GPU for a reason uh, between the Z13 and the X13. The Z13 has a vapor chamber, uh, but this one is a little weak on the cooling. And in fact, uh, you could see that it never actually was really hitting uh, 60 watts consistently. Um, and that was just a combination of, of a few things. But uh, there's some cooling mods that you can do to this device that I have done at this point, and I'm seeing some pretty good results. Uh, and I've taken a lot, a lot of graphs and details to show you um, in this video. So the first thing we'll cover is stock performance, how I measured it. Um, and then uh, what I did was I actually removed the fan filters on the back of this device. In fact, I have one right here. <laughs> this used to be on the inside on these fan filters. Uh, and now that is gone, which uh, I will show you graphs and charts on how much that improves performance. And uh, the other thing I did was I actually then used a copper, a very thin copper heat sink and put that in place uh, uh, along with the heat pipes. And then finally what I did was I actually put a heat pad on top of that, covered the back section right here with copper foil and that it, it was a substantial increase in cooling and I have the numbers to prove it. So I wanna show you the benchmarks uh, that I have here. Now I have, uh, I actually have lots of set of benchmarks, but we have three that we're gonna be looking at today. And the three that we're looking at, we're looking at a red line, which is the stock configuration. And let me just, let me just show you. Okay, so here we go. The red line is stock. The green line is with the fan filters off. And the blue line is with my copper shim combined with copper foil on the back plate of the laptop with the thermal pad connecting them for more heat dissipation out the back. And you can see I have all these different sections of tests. There's basically six sections here. Uh, the six sections are as follows. The first section is uh, the GPU at an 87 degree target temperature. And it and that's with it flat on the desktop. So that, you know, really restricts the, the uh, fan intakes when you have it flat on the desktop. So flat on desktop, two minutes at 87 degree target temperature, two minutes at 80 degree target temperature, and then two minutes at 75 degree target temperature. And then I flipped the laptop around and ran it like this, which has uh, the fan vents facing up, which allows it to draw cool air from the environment really easily, and did that at the 87, 80, and 75 uh, target temperatures. And the reason I did this, you're like, well, what is the point of that? Well, the point is you can see how well the cooling is working um, to keep the machine at a certain temperature and see how much power it can push through it. So, um, these are very telling graphs. So the red line stock, you can see it got so hot that it hit the 87 degree target temperature right here. And that's when it fell off. It stopped using 60 Watts on the GPU, which is our maximum. And it fell, it fell down to 55 Watts because if it would have kept pushing 60, it would have exceeded 87 degrees. So now we take the fan filters off. It's raising in temperature slower, but it still hits 87 degrees here and the watts collapse a little bit uh, affecting frame rate your your performance your consistency goes out the window when your gpu is heating up too much but then we got the blue line the blue line actually uh, was able to maintain pretty well uh, under you can see it only hit 85 it actually didn't ever hit 87 even flat on the desktop uh, with the fan filters, you know, up against the desk where it doesn't get really great airflow. <clears throat> so that's the 87 degree target temperature. And obviously these mods work. You can, you can see it <laughs> in, in the graph. So then we set the target temperature to 80 degrees. And you can see that all of them 
you know, whoop, we're right at 80 degrees and we're going to keep it there. And so with all of them at 80 degrees, because they went from, they literally went from 87 degrees. And when we say, nope, you're at 80, it says, oh, I better cut the watts and, and drop the temperature to go down to 80. So you can see all the configurations by design targeted 80 degrees, but which of them could push more power at 80 degrees with all my mods, we're, we're up at 50 watts on the GPU, uh, where the fan filters off, you're at 45, and maybe you're at 41, 42 stock configuration. And then uh, in the third phase of my test, I say, nope, you don't get 80, you don't get to be at 80 degrees, you only get to be at 75 degrees. Okay, we can see that right here, 75. Everything was forced to conform to 75. And the stock configuration, <coughs> basically said, oh, I, I've got nothing to give. I, I have to reduce the power flowing through the GPU because I'm too hot. So it was limited to between 30 and 35. But uh, the with the cooling mods, you're able to maintain 40. So obviously, massive difference here in power. And then when the machine is, you know, backwards, you can see that uh, at the, when it was at the 80, it's at the 80, it's still at the 87 degree target temperature. None of the configurations were close to 87. Uh, so they all kind of pegged 60 watts. And it could do that because in all of those, you know, we had fresh air going right into the fan intake. So nothing was close to 87. But then we said stay at 80 and the stock configuration and the fan filter ripped off configuration couldn't maintain 60 watts uh, at 80 degrees or less, but with the cooling mods, it could. You can see that blue line. It it was, you know, pretty close to staying at 60 watts. Although you see, it's not as consistent, but pretty close. Um, so yeah, we're talking a lot, but blue line higher, good. Red line lower, bad. Uh, that's basically what I'm saying here. Um, so let's <laughs> let's look at it in terms of, uh, I'm gonna change this and we're gonna look at the frame rates because that's that's what we're actually going for is here we want we want better frame rates, you know? So let's look at the frame rate. So you can see that consistently better frame rates on the blue line. In fact, on average, 215.7 frames per second versus the stock 203, I think that's a 6% improvement so um, that's pretty good. You, you're able to keep your frame rates up higher because you're keeping it cooler. So um, yeah, and this test, you know, these frame rates are coming from Furmark, just so you know, this was, I had to keep, you know, that's what I was using to do a consistent GPU load. Now you may be asking, well, what? Are, how does the CPU factor into all of this? You know, uh, your CPU could have been affecting things. Well, let's look at it. So my CPU power, <clears throat> CPU package power. I locked it at 22 watts Bing. across the board. <coughs> and it did fall out here, but that's because it was getting so hot. It was throttling the uh, the CPU a little bit because it was like, oh, my GPU. Oh. So anyways, but you can see very consistent. The CPU is completely out of the equation because I kept it loaded on three cores at a 22 watt limit. Super consistent. Uh, watts on the CPU. So should be apples to apples. We're just looking at how well the cooling affected things. And that said, let's look at the CPU power because, sorry, CPU temperature right here. You can see the blue line, the CPU temperature stayed consistently lower because better cooling. So the GPU and the CPU have heat pipes that are really close to each other. So if the GPU is getting hotter, the CPU can, that can affect it sometimes. Um, but the overall cooling solution is keeping the CPU at a lower temperature here. So despite better, despite more power going through the GPU in that blue line, the CPU stayed lower. Does that, I hope that makes sense. Let's look at that really close. Let me say that one more time. So despite more power on the blue line flowing through the system overall, the CPU still stayed at a lower overall temperature. And also, uh, let's look at the GPU hotspot because it's the same. It's the same thing. Um, GPU hotspot temperature. Look at this. So even though 
the blue line, we're pushing 60 watts more often. We're pushing a higher 50 watts than the rest more often. Even with all that the same, the blue line is always lower. So what that tells us is these cooling mods actually are effective and, uh, you know, verified, uh, it, you know, I don't, by me, I'm a professional uh, or something, you know. So anyways, I hope that convinces you that you can get uh, better, better cooling with a little bit of ingenuity. Uh, doesn't add, I, I don't think that copper shim weighed hardly anything. Removing the fan filters doesn't move them any weight. But what I'm, what I'm getting at is without changing the look of the machine at all, much better cooling on this machine after my mods. Uh, the one thing that you should keep in mind if you are going to do that shim mod with the foil and everything is this back will get much, much hotter than it would have normally got because normally it has kind of an air gap and it doesn't get super hot to the touch. It can get super hot to the touch when you're doing this. Um, and I don't mind that because if I'm using this like, like this and it, to browse the web or on my lap, if I have this thing on my lap, I'm not playing a game. Um, so, and if I am playing a game and it's on my lap, I'm generally in this mode with a game pad and then the hot is right here, which isn't touching your legs either. So, but keep that in mind. If you're someone who plays this, a game on your lap, you could burn yourself with these mods. Uh, it is what it is. Uh, so just keep that in mind. I'm not saying do these mods either. I'm just saying this is what I did and I think it's cool. So <laughs> this kind of wraps up the video. I'm gonna include all my footage uh, at the end of this. So the video is done, but if you want to see me actually putting it together and what it looks like, uh, you can you can watch those. But otherwise, hope you enjoyed this. Hope it didn't go too long. Uh, stick around for more X13 videos and subscribe to the channel. So thanks for watching. We'll see you. All right, so here are the fan filters that I'm talking about. And they are... The previous generations uh, didn't have this fine filter on them and they did just fine so I think I'm gonna pull those off now as you can see this should be reversible because they're just on here with uh, So if I find there's no difference in having these on, I'll probably put them back on. But my guess is there's going to be a noticeable difference, but we'll see. So we'll retest with this panel back on. Uh, while we have the cover open, I'll show you what my thoughts are with this copper. So um, you can see that these fans pull air in and exhaust it here, here, and here. The air goes out. Well, where does the air come in? Well, through these two vents, but also it pulls air in through this vent back here and you can see where they've ducted this off so it actually pulls air from even under the speakers, it pulls air from other places and pulls it into the fan. Now maybe they wanted those filters on the fan because uh, those fan filters actually increased pressure for it to pull from other places. <clears throat> so we'll just have to see how it goes. But with this, co this copper kind of heat sink that I have, um, there's a place right here where it will fit underneath the shims that are here. And uh, by putting that right here, there's some pads to avoid, but this is exactly the right size to avoid the pads over here. And it can fit right here. 
and that might get us some airflow, um, additional airflow over the heat heat sink, um, which will then go into the air and then just push out. It just gives more more surface area. I don't know if that will make a huge difference. That's why we're testing this. Um, if anything, it will give a little mass, so it would you know be able to handle burst loads a little better potentially. But uh, we're going to test first without installing that piece uh, to see what it looks like just by removing those fan filters. So I'll get the back back on and we'll rerun our tests. Okay, so I've got my data recorded. Uh, won't reveal what happened yet because even I don't know. But at this point I'm going to install this copper shim, well, heatsink, and that should go nicely right here. Uh, my biggest fear is just making sure that this goes on fairly securely because obvious reasons you don't want this rattling around inside your sensitive components breaking things. So. I'm going to cut off a piece of tape exactly sized right here before placing it. If it works out well, if it makes a dramatic difference, <clears throat> at that point I will uh, consider using thermal glue so it, there's no chance of it coming off. And put my copper down. Now I'm putting as close as possible to these shims on this side, so these shims don't hit it either. And if I did that right, this should close. Yep, no clearance issues that I can detect, at least at this point. Okay, so through my testing, I know that this uh, copper shim does help uh, the thermal solution, although slightly. Uh, but what I'm going to try next is when this is in place, it's very close to the back of uh, this back plate. And so what I'm hoping to do is actually, uh, while this is in place, um, I'm going to add some... Uh, this will be here. I'm going to add some uh, thermal pads and I'm going to use some copper foil tape to uh, use it as a heat spreader on the back of this back plate to try to get a, a good portion of this uh, acting as a heat sink in order to uh, kind of spread some heat around, improve the dissipation by uh, a few watts, hopefully. So let's see <laughs> how well I can do that. But before I get started on that, I'm actually going to use uh, this uh, thermal glue to get the heat sink on here properly. So the last thing I want is this to start bouncing around in here. So uh, that's what I'll be doing here. So that glue should also probably improve thermal heat transfer to the heat sink. Uh, so yeah, what I, what you may want to do and what I probably should have done is uh, drilled out some holes so you can still remove the screws that are underneath here, but uh, that's fine.
that's fine for now. Okay, so you can see I've got uh, that all down. This is very sticky. Um, you want this to stay down. You would not want copper foil coming loose and touching components in here. So make sure you do a good job uh, getting these into place. All right, so I'm using a very thin uh, pad here. I just want to get a little bit of heat transfer right there because um, I still need this to close and for it to seal against the top of there. So hopefully this heat pad is not too thick. I don't think it is. In fact, I think that's probably going to be just about perfect. So we'll get this closed up and see how it goes.